bucking up a form in a chase for letterpress. So we start with our galley tray slid onto the stone, the imposing table. And there is our type all set, spaced, and ready for printing. Almost. We have to move our type off of our galley tray onto the stone. The stone is a perfectly flat, level surface that we can then use to set our chase, that is our metal frame, for printing. Really carefully, pinching really tightly and sliding off the surface, I move the type off the tray and put the tray itself off to the side. Here's our type on the stone. So I've centered the camera so that you get a better look at the type itself. And don't worry too much about those two pieces of wood. They're there simply to keep the type from tipping over while I get ready. So I start by placing my cast iron chase, the metal frame, around the type on the table. The wood also helps me move the form around while I get myself organized. I'm going to move these pieces of wood out of the way shortly so that I can plan my lockup. The basic idea here is we want to ensure that this type stays tight in this frame, top to bottom and side to side. One of the first things I may want to do is measure with my pica pole the height of my form. In this case it's about 16 picas. So I get a couple of 16 pica slugs and place them side to side and this will help to keep everything tight. And now reaching up I collect some furniture. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. But furniture are chunks of wood, different thicknesses, different lengths. Thicknesses are obvious, the lengths are stamped on the end. In this case, these are 30 pica lengths. You'll notice that I'm placing one at the top of the form and one at the bottom, slightly out of sync with one another, slightly skewed. And I'll do the same on the side. In this case, I don't want the pieces of wood touching one another. I will begin from around the lead type form moving out with increasingly long pieces of furniture. This is a personal preference. I like it for stability. Now as I move towards the inside of the frame itself, moving away from the lead type, I need to leave some space for these things. These things are called coins. Q-U-O-I-N-S. Coins. And these little beauties are what allow us to achieve the kind of pressure within the chase that we need to hold the type and the lead and the furniture all in place. In most cases, you need coins on the top and on the side. Another rule of thumb here to understand is that typically we don't put metal next to metal. So, the coins will go close to the inside of the chase, but we'll have thin pieces of wood, which we call reglet, to prevent the metal from touching metal. This, like most of typesetting, is slightly fussy work, and it requires a bit of back and forth you put in a piece of wood, you test it, you maybe take it out and find a thicker or a thinner piece, and eventually you'll come to a point where things mostly don't move. If you're worried about where I'm getting all these different pieces of wood, again, we'll talk about it towards the end of this video. can see that I'm adjusting the coin there with my fingers to make it a little bit thinner, pulling them further apart so that I can fit all the wood furniture and reglet in that I need. And now comes the time when we tighten the coins themselves. This is a coin key. And this one fits these specific coins themselves. There are different coins that we can also use to take a different key. Basically, you stick the key down into the teeth and twist. As the coins move together, they're forced together by turning the key, they get wider. They put pressure on the form and lock everything in place. 
you can see there that I twisted the coins, I locked them, but it still wasn't enough pressure. So then I released that pressure, added a little bit more wood, a very thin reglet, and then I will lock up the coins again with the key and see if I've got the right pressure. You can also see that I'm going back and forth between the coins, and that's because you always apply a quarter of a turn or so on one and then the next. That way, everything locks up square. It's also important to ensure that the type doesn't begin to bow or curve upwards. If that's the case, you have to loosen the coins, flatten things down, and then begin tightening again. So once you think everything is tight enough, you can very carefully lift it off of the imposing stone just a centimeter or two and pushing down with your fingers test to see if the type is moving. If the type is moving you're going to need to lay the frame back down, loosen it, and then adjust. The reason of course why we don't do this off the table is because if the type is loose and falls through it's a real mess. So we lucked out and our type seems to be fitting well but for the purposes of this video it's important to talk about what happens if there is something moving. Often the first time setting type, a lot of stuff is gonna move for you, but it's not a big deal. We loosen up the form and we check to see which lines seem to be causing us trouble. Often it's a copper or a brass spacer slipped into place with the help of tweezers, again, without pressure, that will solve our problems. Once we slide in the appropriate spacer, sometimes in many cases, we lock up the form again top and side and top and side and test. And that looks pretty good. Sometimes, no matter what you do, your spacers or adding different spacing material, larger spacing material doesn't work. And that's where we get into any means necessary. Bits of cardboard, small pieces of paper, Mayfair, mat board, whatever we can stick in to ensure that when we tighten it, the type doesn't move. Don't fool yourself. If the type moves a little bit, it's very likely going to fall apart when you're printing on the press. And we really don't want that. So there we have our beautiful locked up form. And the back is almost as beautiful as the front. And we're ready to either proof this, load this into a press, or store it for later. Now assuming that we're going to store it for later, we can pick up our frame, our chase, place it on our galley tray, and then loosen the coins. You never leave a locked up chase under pressure in storage. It's bad for the type, it's bad for the chase, and we only have so many chases so we need to share them. So I said I was going to talk a little bit about the wood furniture and the reglets. So here they are. They're located conveniently in front of you while you are locking up your form. On the right, this is our furniture. There's a 25 pica piece of furniture. There's the width, there's the length, and each one of these little shelves corresponds to the particular length and the particular width of our furniture. There's a 20. It's important that when you're putting your furniture away, it goes back exactly where it came from. Oh, and then it never gets wet with water. It's really bad for the wood and it throws it out of alignment. To the left of the furniture are the reglet. Reglet is much thinner and comes in a much wider range of lengths. This row that I'm pointing at here are slightly thicker at 21 picas long, and here's 21 picas long thinner. The range of reglet we have access to is what really allows us to fine tune the lockup. Just like the furniture, just like the type, it's important to put them back as best you can where they came from. They're too small to have their numbers stamped on the end, so you can always use a little ruler to cheat on the front of the case. Here, pressing it against, I can see that this is a 21 pica reglet, and I can always check it against my pica pull if I want to see. But once I know the length, and I know it's the thicker of the two models, I can find its corresponding spot in the case and put it away. So that's it, the basics of locking up a form. Next stop, ink and press.